The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. Being smart enough to oh, be like, okay, you know what I need to leave, I need to get out of here, is trying to manage getting out of there and keeping everything intact. Keeping your CDL and not sacrificing that, you know, getting arrested or getting a whole bunch of different tickets or having a, you know, crazy things going on where you've abandoned the truck or they sent the police to come and remove you or anything like that. And then at the same time, not having a crazy amount of money, you know, that you owe the company that you now have to, you owe, now you owe the company, you either need to work that off or that in addition is going to be, you know, tacked on to, I don't know if it would be tacked onto your taxes or if they would sue you or how exactly it would go, but... Shanae, Shanae in the building. So you drove for Super Eagle for about nine months in yes. 2023. Yep. You say that, unfortunately, the company is not built for drivers that's coming in to be owner operators uh, with that said you decided to uh, jump ship what's uh, what's your story what's what's going on so this is excuse me i'm sorry this is my experience from super ego um i went over into the company because i got a recommendation from um an older driver like we i ran into him a few times at um western express that's the company i was at first and uh, we exchanged like information and just, I would inquire, you know, about trucking. Like I really wanted to learn how to become an owner operator without having to depend on other people or just like flat out financing and like, you know, using my savings or anything like that to like get in the truck and to like, you know, secure loads and everything else like that. He told me a bunch of different, a bunch of different ways to go about it. Mm hmm and I decided since he was going over to Super Ego, you know, he would be able to guide me a little bit. You know what? I'll go over to Super Ego as well. Right. So before I get into like my full experience, I'm going to say this. I looked at the reviews like a lot of other people, you know, I, I seen like a lot of the trash talk people were saying. And then I also looked at the good reviews and then the good reviews. There was one driver in particular, a black gentleman. I don't remember his name, but he had like, I think blue lights in like the back of his video and he's talking about his experience and how he's been able to you know work things out mm -hmm. so i'm thinking okay if i go into this with a certain type of mindset and just see how they operate i'll be able to like secure my truck i should be able to finesse the situation a little bit and make sure i'm making money because you know the truck note costs the insurance costs um your cargo uh insurance costs the amount you're paying for your trailer if you're leasing the trailer it costs uh and I decided, like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do next. And I went that route because I wasn't, I wasn't more educated on, you know, trucking. Like, okay, so I'm going to start here. I came into trucking in 2022. I started at uh, Schneider and I got a lot of great training from Schneider. But because Schneider is so, sh like, strict on their rules and regulations, like, I got let go because of a heartbreaking. After that, I was so eager and still ambitious. And, you know, that new driver vibe to, like, get into, you know, uh, a truck as quickly as possible. I started applying to random companies. Western was the first company that um, responded quickly. I immediately went to Western. I was like in my truck within three days, entire like training. There wasn't any really, you know, any training. I was just like in a classroom doing like um, videos and things like online and testing online and then like a really quick road uh, test or whatever. And then I got into my truck. So I went there, learned trucking a little bit more. You know, I got my experience in. I'm driving everywhere. I'm securing my loads properly. I'm picking up on time. I'm delivering on time. Not really having too much of an issue with um, sitting and waiting, you know, for loads. Like, I'm making money. And then once you get a handle on that, and then, okay, now I have, you know, I'm realizing I have this extra time in the week and in my days and in my schedule, I can make more money. I'm even running my clock so that I can just keep running every single day if I want to, but I have to make sure I have enough hours that hold me over until it like resets itself. And then I have, you know, my hours from the previous week as well. So after I got a handle on that, I realized, you know what, I'm not making enough money. Um, the rate at Western isn't so great in the wintertime. So after like all of the information, I left. I, I went on over to Super Ego. 
I flew myself out. Um, after speaking with the recruiter, he promised me like a whole a whole lot of amazing things. I'm gonna come over into the company. I'm gonna make the 88 um, percent of every single load. Um, I get to choose whatever truck that I want. I'll be in my truck within three days. Uh, just all of the things that you want to hear, but at the same time you're hesitant on. And I I should have like listened to like that little voice in the back of my head to just know if it sounds too good to be true, it's not. So me and the recruiter, we were like, you know, I'm not going to say close, but I was able to call him with any like questions, concerns, problems that I had, even as far as like once I finally got into the truck. So I actually had two trucks at um, Super Ego. The first truck I had actually had a rat inside of the truck. And I had that truck for like maybe two weeks. And then I took that truck back and then they put me into um, a brand new Mack truck. As far as the process of getting to Super Ego, I've I've never heard. I heard the previous young lady's um, story about how they flew her out. That wasn't an option for me. Um, I flew myself out from uh, Philly. And after I flew myself out, um, once I got to the the airport itself... So I got to the O'Hare airport, someone OD'd. I'm calling um, for the driver to pick me up immediately. As soon as the plane landed and my cell phone had secured service, I'm calling for the driver to uh, pick me up. I'm not getting any answer, no answer. I was at the airport for over five hours, no response, no answer, no answer, until they eventually sent for um, an Uber to pick me up. And I had to call the recruiter because the gentleman number, Manny, that I had, who was supposed to uh, send the van to come and pick me up, he wasn't picking up at the time. I spoke with my recruiter. He let me know, well, Manny's going to take care of me. He's waiting for me there at the office. As soon as I get there, um, he's going to come out and get me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. So I'm calling Manny after I get into the Uber. I finally get to the location. I'm walking up. I'm checking out the truck. Um, I'm walking toward the door. Manny approaches me. We're both on the phone. I'm like, hello, introduce myself. He introduces himself. We walk into the building. So I um, walk all the way back to his desk. We start talking about trucks and which truck I want to be in. He offered me a brand new uh, Mack truck, which was a twenty um, a 2023 Mack Anthem. And at first I was like, no, absolutely not. I know that price was going to be beyond crazy ridiculous. And I felt like if I'm getting it brand spanking new, it hasn't been broken in yet. you know. And just from my experience, the truck works better once it's been broken in. Like, it's just, it's just certain, it's just certain things on the truck that just function a lot better, in my opinion. And I've driven quite a few different trucks, so I ended up settling on a T680, and this is the truck that had the rat in it. I discussed with him, you know, the price, and at first he was offering me it, uh, the truck, I think, for around 180 thousand or something like that. And then I eventually talked him down to like 135 thousand um, dollars for the truck. We discussed weekly payment um, for the truck itself, the insurance, cargo, everything else. We discussed all of that information, and then I secured my truck. And then he took me over to um, speak with this uh, young lady. I sat and I had to wait. There was like a couple other people in front of me. Then once I spoke to her, it wasn't like a conversation or me like you know getting a better understanding of anything at all. It was her securing, you know, me being in that truck. And this was a safety department. Um, so she did the paperwork. I got my paperwork. And then I had to take a, a class for the tablet on how to use the tablet, what to do if I run out of hours, um, you know, so that they can like reset your clock and stuff like that, how to call it in. And then um, I also spoke with accounting. So after this process, um, I, I I get my truck. So now I'm, I want to test drive the truck. I want to check the truck out fully thoroughly. I want to look at the truck. We were out on the yard. I did have that option, but it was at night. So I needed to see a little bit better. So I, I go to the yard. I'm, I'm checking out the truck. There's a few other drivers there as well. So I'm looking at um, the oil, the tires, you know, whether or not they're worn or not. I'm looking at the brakes. Um, I'm looking to see if anything's like welded on or like taped or glued or zip tie, just anything like out of the ordinary. And um, I will say that anybody that's going over into that company, if you choose to go after, you know, this and all of the other information that you research, like take somebody that's more knowledgeable about a truck. If they don't allow them on the yard and they give you a test drive, take it off the yard, immediately stop, allow that person to fully and thoroughly check out the truck and then, you know, go on your merry way if you choose to. But I checked out the truck. I was running the truck and it seemed okay. Um, I did a full uh, uh, pump down, but it's not the same because I'm not, you know, connected to a trailer, but I did a pump down. I'm checking out all of the gauges. I'm checking to make sure the heat works, the air works. 
Um, my signals are working. All of my lights are, you know, working. There's nothing wrong with my fifth wheel. You know, all of the things you're looking at to make sure, okay, this is a good truck. I don't need to put any money or any work into this truck right now. So there was a few things that I needed um, to get fixed. So I mentioned it to the gentleman. He said, oh, yeah, we're going to fix it. Then kind of like tried to brush me off. Um, and then the, uh, I went to the back to the hotel. I'm saying back to the hotel. I didn't get there yet. But I went to the hotel. And then the next day um, when I went into uh, Super Ego, there was uh, some random guy that approached me as I'm like in the truck, you know, checking it out, trying to I was attempting to drive it over to the maintenance yard. And this guy approaching me, he's like, what are you doing? This is not how it works. This isn't what you do. You can't just take the truck and do whatever you want. And I'm letting him know, like, you know, I already have the paperwork for the truck. Like, this is my truck, you know. Um, he's like, yeah, no, somebody has to come out and uh, inspect the truck and make sure you're okay with the truck and all of this other extra stuff, not knowing I've already signed the paperwork for the truck. But there's, like, um, fleet managers, right, the people you call when there is something wrong with the truck. And this, I guess this guy was supposedly, he was claiming he was my fleet manager, but he was not my fleet manager. He was just somebody on like an, a weird ego trip. And I don't know where he's seen me, like where exactly I caught his eye. If he was coming onto the yard or if he was coming out of the building, I was not paying this man no mind. But when I looked up, he was walking toward me coming um, like from toward the maintenance building but I didn't hear the door close or anything like that. And um, security was kind of setting up to block off the, um, the entrance and exit. So I'm going back and forth with this guy and I'm telling him, you don't speak to me like that. I don't tolerate that. I'm not disrespecting you. You treat everybody with decency and respect. And because you can't speak to me properly, get away from me. So I, I you know, I'm talking to him like that, um, mainly because I see the way that they're interacting with other people and how aggressive the conversations are. I'm not there for that. I'm not about to muscle you to get into a truck. I'm not looking for you to like swindle me to getting into a truck. I just want to know what's going on with this truck. Can I get things fixed on it? Um, is everything properly working? And when can I get on the road? Those were like my my main concerns. So we went back and forth. Then he, he went in the building, came out. I immediately called the recruiter like, I'm about to leave. Um, the recruiter's like, wait, no, don't. I guess he called Manny. Then Manny came out. And um, it's like a little back and forth conversation. And then this pushes me into the next day. I end up going back to the um, the hotel. A bunch of back and forth conversations pushes me into the next day. I go back to the yard. At this point, I took the truck. Now, I got in my truck. I drove it off the yard. I had all of my paperwork and everything for it. I know that they were going to be calling me to get a load, um, which they had done two times, but I ignored the call because I didn't know, you know, who the number was or anything like that. I wasn't expecting the call. I was expecting to reach out when I was ready to roll. So I'm talking to um, the manager and maintenance the, day, the, the next day when I go back, and I'm discussing some of the problems I'm having on the truck. So with the T680, I don't know if any of the other trucks experience this, um, how they get the trucks in, there are certain things that do not, like there are certain features that do not come with these trucks that they have. And they either add the features um, or add things onto the truck. Like uh, I know like their tracking system or whatever, it's like tethered into like the computer system, but not to the point where they can like shut down the truck, but um, they can locate, you know, wherever the truck is at all times. So I was having an issue with that. My entire dashboard um, had turned red. And uh, this is after me, like I idled for maybe like three hours of me idling the truck. And I'm so happy that like, as soon as I got into it, I didn't just take it off the yard. That light came on and they were saying how they were going to fix it. Um, I just needed to pull it into the shop, pulled it into the shop that didn't work. And I was like, you know what? I'll just take it to Kenworth, you know, and this truck was actually a, a 2022. And I was telling them I'll take it to Kenworth. I know it has a warranty on it. And then the mileage was actually pretty low as well. I believe it was um, around 30,000 something miles on the truck, maybe 39,000 miles on the truck. And I'm just saying like, you know, I'm not trying to be a hassle to them. I can just, you know, take the truck, get it checked out. And if there's like anything they can't do, I can bring it back and get another truck. They did not want me to do that at all. So all of the sensible things that you're thinking about of how to properly like make sure this equipment has been taken care of. If you're even curious about getting um, the history report on the truck, I even asked for that. Like, do you guys have an accident report? Do you have a maintenance report? They provide none of that to you at all. So you have to figure out, you know, other ways to go about getting that information, whether it's, you know, a local motor vehicle or um, the Kenworth dealership. And I don't know if they'll release all of the information if you're not, you know, the full on owner of the truck, but Super Ego is not going to provide it to you.
Um, after I started seeing things like that, they got my truck into the shop. They got that code off. And then um, I, I, I started to, I pulled it out. Um, I started to idle again. They allowed me into the shop. I pulled it out and I drove it in. Um, they allowed me to um, pull it out. I'm still on the yard and I'm just letting the truck idle. I really need to make sure the truck is good. I let it idle. As soon as I hit like the fourth hour, um, that uh, signal didn't come on. I turned it off and I was like, okay, I think I'm good to go now. And I went back to the uh, the motel, not hotel, but the motel I was staying at. Um, and it's the one that has, it has a bunch of cameras, a one way in, one way out. You can see the entire parking lot. It's not huge. Um, and it's very secure. Uh, and the Holiday Inn, no, not it's not the Holiday Inn. I think it's like the Super 8 or something like that. That's like down the, the street a couple of blocks. Um, so I drove my truck back to pick up my things um, from the motel and then um, to get some food and then to go pick up my trailer so I could get out of there. I got to the trailer yard. That's a little bit of a wait and a half. So just because they have so many people that's waiting and um, a lot of people checking out their, uh, their trailers. And um, you have to like, you don't have to, but you have to tell them that you've inspected the trailer. You're going to sign paperwork stating that you inspected the trailer and that you have the um, proper information for it. They're going to give you the registration stickers and all of that and put it on it. And then the inspection stickers and put that on the truck. And then you call, get a load and you're on your way. My issue was, um, I, I'm, after after I left the trailer yard, you know, I I tried to secure a load before I even left the yard. But after I left the trailer yard, it took a little a little wait for me to pick up a load. Um, I got my load. It, I picked it up from somewhere in Illinois, and um, I was trying to head home uh, to get toward like you know the Jersey area so that I could get the rest of my things from um, my home and I could just you know continue on rolling and stuff. So I got a load. It was going to Ohio from Illinois, I believe. And I needed to deliver that, drop it. And then they would get me a load from Ohio going to Jersey. And um, that first load was, uh, I can't say pretty smooth because it, it was the, the place that I went to pick it up. It was just sketchy. A lot of things with this company is just sketchy. You go somewhere, you may sign in, um, provide somebody with your ID, and they don't even communicate to tell you, you know, what you're picking up or what you're hauling or what the weight is. You may not find out until after the fact. And um, I have a thing about hauling anything, uh, depending on the size of it, that's over a certain amount of weight. Um, I'm trying to, you know, stay away from my gross weight. Like I'm, I, I, I try like my best to stay away from it. I've had some bad experiences with that before. Um, being at Schneider and Western, where a load my shift a little bit, it, mainly Western, um, where um, they you pick up these really huge load uh, rolls and the load shift, and then all of the weight is like on the drive tires. And now like I'm like beyond struggling to get up a hill, and I'm at 12 miles per hour. So from that experience, I wanted to avoid that and um. I had um, a little bit of issues with being able to like really check out the load to make sure that it was okay. So me calling in, letting them know what I'm experiencing, something I guess that was notated because it eventually turns into having tons of loads that shift. With this part of you getting loads that you're not familiar with or them not telling you the actual load that you're going to pick up, is is that the part that you uh, that you mentioned in our background conversation about getting loads that are purposely messed up? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Yes, that that is definitely the part. And I've had several loads that shifted after that, and I've dealt with crazy, crazy like um, restacking and rewrapping experiences with Super Ego. I've dealt with it in Colorado. I've dealt with it in Georgia. I've dealt with it in Nebraska. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's just too, it's just too much. You know, there's things should be just set up a certain type of way so that you don't have to um, hassle when those things happen. Like there's a lot of things that you're already paying for, right? Like your cargo insurance. There's a lot of things that you're already paying for that um, should secure these things. You know, there should be people that come out to either fix the load or for location or for them to have locations that you can go to to get the loads um, restacked. But instead of it like being that, it'll turn into them trying to, they find somebody that has like some type of little small side gig or side hustle or H. Robinson, um, they uh, restacked, I believe like two or three loads for me that I um, picked up, which were also, you know, H. Robinson. But I had a lot of experiences like that. Um, and I have experience with load straps. I have experiences with like using the boards, 
with um, using the little um, corner pieces to make sure that your straps aren't like digging into the load. I had a lot of that. And my main problem was being entirely too knowledgeable. They're not really, they're not looking for that and they don't care about it. This is what they're giving you. Take it and go, not take it or leave it. It's take it and go. Because if you leave it, you're going to be stranded. That's happened to me before I was picking up a load. Um, I'm going to stop naming places I'm picking up though, because I don't want that to turn into like any type of um, problem for them. But I picked up a load from a, a particular location and um, I sat there for entirely too long. There were so many other people coming in and they couldn't even get their loads. And when I finally did get the load, the load had already shifted before I even left the shipper. Like they're aware there's plenty of people that complain about it. They're aware, but there's a lot of people that's willing to do business with them. And it's so like, I can't say backhanded, but it like, it undermines the driver. If you go into, you know, a shipper or receiver and you're discussing, or you want to know like uh, information on, Hey, like uh, by any chance, is there somebody here that could, you know, tell me a little bit more information about the load. If you want to know about the, uh, what the true rate con is or anything like that, or, um, how much weight in total was discussed with the broker or which broker they spoke to, because you, you might even get to a point where you're calling in, you have any type of issue. You're calling in a super ego for them to like reach out to a broker or somebody because you don't have that information yet, or you can't get in touch and they have to reach out to two to three to, uh, to four people before you actually get a response. And sometimes it's because they rebroker the loads within the separate companies that they have. I personally think that, you know, uh, rocket expediting might get a load and um, they might take a certain portion of the load. Maybe they don't have a driver who knows. And then they give the load over to um, Jordan who uh, maybe they, they don't have a load, but Hey, I'm willing to find a, a driver for you for a certain percentage. And then they give the load over to X, Y, and Z. I don't know how they do it or how they set it up, but I know that asking a lot of questions and trying to be like very detail oriented on picking up your loads, making sure you're not overweight, making sure you're not hauling anything illegal, you know, and you're not doing anything too crazy, especially with how they like reset your clock. It like, it just raises a lot of red flags for them. You mentioned the Raycon. You uh -huh. you say that uh, you say that the company, a controversial company, Super Eagle, are stealing Raycons from you guys. Have you and being that you mentioned the Raycon, have you noticed noticed that? And if so, how did you come across to find out that so your I, Raycon was being messed with? It, it's simple. You never see the Raycon. You see what they type up as as a Raycon. You, you never see the Raycon. You never see any type of documentation that comes from a broker with their logo on it, their name on it, anything at all. You never see the real Raycon. You only see what Super Ego has created as a Raycon. And I've received Raycons that they'll send over to me um, in an email where I've agreed uh, verbally over the phone to a certain price for a load, you know, a certain price, a certain weight, a certain mileage for this low and a certain product. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll take it. They send over the Raycon and there's information missing from the Raycon, but they want you to roll, roll, roll and go ahead and start moving. They definitely, they're definitely stealing money for people. I don't, I don't know how deep it is now um, because I know that there's a new law passed um, uh, for the Raycon to be um, available to drivers. Like there's supposed to be some type of like transparency of that. And I've also heard they've lowered now, they've lowered the percentage that they're willing to pay drivers. That's coming over from the supposed 88 to 75. Either way, you never see the Raycon. But in addition to that, it's not just my opinion. It's me like checking things out, looking to see what's going on, the conversations I'm having, and then like just knowing like something is off here and trying to communicate that with my dispatcher and just things not adding up or making sense or they don't have time to talk to me, they need to go. And it's always when I'm asking like, you know, something that I perceive to be vital information. So I, I've asked a few dispatchers because I went through plenty, but I asked a few of the dispatchers, um, you know, is this the real Raycon? Like, where's the real Raycon? And then one day, one gentleman, he finally told me because I told him like, this is not the real Raycon. This is something that you guys have like typed up in some type of like Excel format and you send it out to drivers like none of the broker's information is on this, like, like nothing at all. This isn't what you received. And I, and he confirmed that for me. You do not, you never receive the real Raycon. And this is what he told me. It's a part of the company's policy 
not to give the drivers the real rate con. A dispatcher told me that. All of their calls is recorded. They can go back and check, okay? All right, so during a conversation with the with the dispatchers and everything, you mentioned in the background that you experienced stalking and harassment and getting so many calls throughout the day. Like, can you put a little bit of light on mm-hmm. that? So the stalking and harassment, sometimes it's other drivers. They'll um, pay a driver to come out and and check on the truck, to look at the truck. And they a lot of times they're plotting to steal the truck, to take the truck from you, send somebody out to recover the truck and leave you stranded. Doesn't matter if you're if you're like um, on a load or not, though, they have people, they have drivers that specifically go and recover trucks and the money that they're making in each truck and all of that. They have different deals that they work out. At one point, they offered, you know, um, me a little bit of money to go and check and see whether or not a driver was okay. Um, And then I was like, are you, you, I had to act like, are you really asking me to go and check and see if they're okay? Or are you trying to check to see if they abandoned the truck? Simply because I want to know what I'm walking into. I was in Florida at the time, you know, like I don't live down there. I don't know the area. I don't want to get hurt or like put in harm's way. Um, and at first, the, the guy was like, uh, oh, yeah, no, it's a crazy driver. He quit. Maybe he damaged the truck. And I was like, uh, OK, well, you know, I'm willing to, to just drive by, but I probably won't stop. So he's like, OK, I'll send you the information. Didn't send the information. I called him back. He said he was sending it. Called him back after 10 minutes. He's like, oh, yeah, well, no, it's OK. We're not we're not going to uh, we're not going to send you um, uh, to go check it out. We have somebody else that's going to check it out. And I said, OK, and I left it at that. But I've spoken to other drivers. I've encountered, like in the Virginia area, a couple in particular that told me that's, you know, something that they do when they make a little extra money from it. If Super Eagle, they're in a certain area and they're like, hey, can you check to see if this truck is here? And if the trailer is, is attached, they'll go check it out and then they'll let them know and then they get paid from that. Like there, there's a lot of that. And you'll have people that approach you asking, hey, so how is Super Ego? Like, what do you think of the company? And at first you just, I think that it comes across like it's like, you know, a random driver, you know, and, and they're just, you know, trying to chat and see whether or not they should come over. I never bashed the company or directly told anybody, hey, do not go to Super Ego. Hey, don't come over here at all. Up until this point, like after like, like the last couple of months just has been really, really weird. The things that they do after the fact to try to make sure that you can't secure another job. You have to be smart enough to like move quickly once you see that things aren't going, you know, the right way. People aren't doing things that they said that they would do. And you know that things are just way too off for you. But um, I would have drivers really approach me and say, hey, how do you think it's, you know, uh, this company is? How's it going for you? And I would tell them, well, you know, if if you're a certain type of person, like if, if you're a business savvy, if you know how to uh, keep your books uh, together, keep your paperwork and everything organized and in order, you, you can secure, you know, your own fuel card away from the company and you know how to run, this can possibly be for you. If you have your own LLC, you can possibly make it work. And this is only in the beginning because my first week, I made $5,700 in total. I took home like Mm $1,700. My next week was a little bit better than that. And then my week after that was absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. After that, it just went downhill. And the whole like mice in the truck thing, that was too much too. So let's circle back to when you initially got the first truck and you noticed that it was a rat. Was was it a live rat or was it a dead rat? I'm I'm sure if it was a live rat and it ran across, it it freaked you out. it It was alive. It was alive. I did not physically see it. I would only hear it at nighttime, like once I turn off the light and I closed the back curtain on oh the T680s God. that they have. It didn't come with like the front curtains at all at the time. Okay. But um, I had some food in the truck. I had um, like some, some bread, some rolls I got from Panera that I would keep in a, you know, a certain area in a container. And um, I had a little bit of food that I placed in the refrigerator and I had um, tissues placed in another area um, away from the food and it it ate through the tissues it ate through the fucking i'm so sorry to cut i'm sorry it ate through the tissues and this freaked me out so much because once i mentioned it it became like you know this laughter thing something that was so funny and um i had so i had worked the truck out right away from the company and then i had to work it back in order to get another truck and it was just too much going on and they were telling me how yeah oh well they would bring the truck in and then take it someplace and just open the doors and, and the mice will just go and it'll just leave. And then, you know, I'll be able to get it back. And I'm like, hell no. Yeah, no, I'm not coming back in this truck. 
you know, they eat through wires. Like That goes to tell me that that truck been sitting for a while before you even came up on it to have an infestation no, of a it, rat to come it, up it in wasn't there. Be- no, the, the last driver that had secured that truck, they left their binder and their information in the truck. And once I found it, I was trying to reach out to them to call them to see like, hey, is this, does this truck have any problems? But I also wanted to ask about, you know, is there like a mice in this truck or like, am I like really tripping out? Like, I know for a fact I haven't torn through, you know, any type of tissue box or like, like what the hell is going on here? And um, the, the driver, if, if you leave all, if you leave that type of detailed information that has your personal um information in that book, right? Like your government identification numbers and things are like tethered in in information in this book. Like that was just like such a red flag. Like I'm not dealing with this at all, but they left their binder. The driver that had the truck previously before me, he went into the truck in October and he came out of the truck in January, literally a couple of days before I had it. All right. So let's circle back to the clock. You said during orientation that they will actually sit you down how to get your hours reset it what what was the conversation like with that so it's just telling you if you start to run if you're running out of hours um, with your clock uh what you need to do so they're going to tell you to log out they're going to fix the clock and then you're going to log back in but in addition to that excuse me i'm sorry I don't, I don't know where they're getting these extra hours from or how they steal the hours if it's coming from like other drivers unused hours or what but in addition to being told that um pretty much that they're gonna the only thing it's showing you is how to log into the tablet and how the tablet works and how your clock is going to be reset that's it there isn't like a a detail that they break down into about how you know You have four different clocks and this one works for that and this works for that. I didn't experience any of that at all. And I sat at a table with like a couple of people around it. They don't like go into detail talking to you about how you need to run the truck, you know, how you need to be concerned with, you know, your fuel, um, how much uh, uh, fuel your truck consumes or whatever. Fueling, you know, based on like how much, um, how many miles you're running. Like there's no real information being given to you about anything. They just let you know, like, what their process is and how it works. That's it. Just give you the truck and you just drive pretty much. Give you the truck. You have Well, you have to take that, that little course or whatever. Now it's different. The office is set up a little bit different now. They have different rooms and spaces from what I've, like, seen pop up online and people that I've talked to that's still in the company that still go back. But you, I sat down at a table. These people sat down at a table. Or you sat around in this room, um, this wide room where the dispatchers are, the sales people are, and accounting like right in front, all out in the open in this like massive room. And you go through uh, the process of that, of, of how the clock works. They get you all set up for it. They get your information into it. They get you logged in. And they provide you with um, a, like a connection cable for the truck. So... Nine months, first couple of paychecks was good. Paychecks after that, diabolically bad. Nine months Mm -hmm. in, when did you notice it was time for you to leave and jump ship? I was literally trying to get out of there, like, at at the, at the, I'm going to say, I'm going to say at my second month mark. Like, I have a, within nine months, I have, like, a crazy long history of wild things that happen at being at Super Ego. I've had them try to steal the truck. Some guy named Tony from recovery literally just tried to steal the truck in the load because I was refusing to take a load. I drove from California to New Jersey and drive it to um, Illinois. Like I just a bunch of crazy stuff. After getting out of the truck with the rat, I got into the brand new, you know, 2023 Mac Anthem. And then that had a problem with the coolant hose leaking because it was improperly installed and it was rubbing up against the engine. And then um, the exhaust hose, the entire piece not being properly secured into the truck. It was like bent and turned a certain way. And I had to like going through like, you know, running loads and trying to make it work and trying to work on my truck myself and learning how to do different things on myself and truckers walking me through how to fix certain things on my own, going through that whole process. And that that's my I'm still within two months, but like just going through that whole process, it just it forced me out. As soon as I knew that, like it it was a goal for them to get me out of the truck, I was trying to get out of there. One of the crazy instances was somebody that came there to try to recover the truck while you were still in the truck. I was still in the truck. What happened? What happened with that encounter? 
I didn't, I'm not allowing you to take, to take anything from me. Nothing that I, I, so I, I put my social security down. I didn't put my LLC down up front. So that wasn't happening. I was returning this, you know, if you really needed me gone and you guys weren't going to um, work with me, I was going to have to return that truck to uh, Illinois myself. There was nobody, there was nobody going to be towing it back or any of that. So this is what happened. Um, Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider okay y'all got two options well one but two options you can either subscribe for the channel for more and if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early make sure you join join the channel all right shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man thank you very much now let's get back to the show this is what happened with this situation. Uh, the first is the guy started to threaten me. First, no, first I'm, I'm speaking with my dispatcher and I'm trying to negotiate a new rate since now you want me to go. I just drove across country and now you want me to head to the Midwest. And I was not looking to go to the Midwest at all. I was looking to go south and I was going to run from Florida to PA back and forth for a little bit. You know, I just needed like some time to recover. I didn't want to burn myself out. And I was feeling a lot of that physically, like I was. The company, the way that they push you with these loads and giving you the loads and you getting into the negative and all of that, it makes it makes drivers run so hard. It will make you go over your clock, you know? You can set yourself up so you don't go over your clock. You, you're running um, legally, and they will reset your clock on their own. You don't have to call them and then call you and tell you, hey, you have a new clock, you can run. But with this instance, um, they sent out a driver. First, the guy was intimidating me. Okay, sorry, let me back up a little bit. Speaking with the dispatcher, trying to get um, uh, a decent price on me now having to drive to Illinois after driving this across country. And um, the it was just, it was properly wrapped. It wasn't fully wrapped all the way to the bottom. And where I was delivering, they didn't allow that. So um, once they let me know that, I went back up to the, uh, the guard shack and I said, hey, do you guys uh, work with anybody that does like, you know, rewrapping or like restacking of loads or anything like that. They said, yes, provided me with the paper. I gave that information to the company. The company didn't want to do that. The broker didn't want to do that. They wanted me to now take the load to Illinois. They, um, I was negotiating a price. My dispatcher was trying to make it happen. He came back like, this is what we're, we're paying for this load. There's not going to be any more money um, given for this load. And I was like, that's absolutely not happening. Um, and then it was like a back and forth. He got his manager and then she's trying to secure more money or from what she was telling me. And then I told her like, you know, like I'm, I'm not going to be delivering this load unless, you know, I get like, you know, some decent money on the load. They're trying to say, oh, well, you're holding the load hostage. No, I'm not. I delivered the load. You know, I have all of the documentation showing that I checked into this place. They're rejecting the load and I'm checking out. Like, where do you want me to take it? That was it. I, w I was at least offering that for no more money. If they wanted me to take it to the next location and get it um, fully wrapped and bring it back, I had no issue at all with, you know, doing that. But you're asking me to go from New Jersey to Illinois. That's like hundreds of miles, not 50, 60, 120, with, even within 200. Like, yeah, no. So that was a back and forth. Then the recovery guy called me. He's like, yeah, well, um, you better not move that truck because we're going to call DOT and you're going to be arrested. I said, oh, okay, really? So I'm going back and forth with this guy. I'm being sarcastic. He's um, so frustrated, talking to me disrespectfully. I eventually start cussing him out. But um, while we're going back and forth through text, I definitely called the DOT and I definitely had them send somebody out. So they contacted um, a, a police station and um, they came out instead of DOT and I'm letting them know, you know, what's going on, how I'm being threatened and all of this stuff. Um, I showed them all the documentation I have for the truck. They're saying that there's nothing that they can do. So they take off. Uh, the driver shows up to come and pick up um, uh, my, my truck. And then he's like, oh, well, I'm just going to take the trailer because he has a truck of his own. He came in a truck. So I'm like, um, well, I'm not doing that until, you know, one, I'm paid. And then I figure out exactly like what's going on here. I'm not dropping this trailer that I'm leasing to give it to you. Like, that's crazy. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm just going to take it. I'm going to deliver it to Illinois and they'll give you a loaner. And um, 
I'll bring this one back. I'll meet back up with you. None of that was happening. Uh, the guy tried to say, oh, yeah, well, I'm terminated. I'm fired. I no longer work for the company. The other guy called a police officer out. The police officer came out. The police officer is now talking to that guy and um, the guy who sent him, the guy, Tony, and he's letting him know, like, you, you can't do this. Like, it's illegal. Like, we're not, she's not about to be arrested. We're not forcing her out of the truck. He's like, she's lying. Everything she's telling you, because I'm saying like everything that happens start to finish. And the police officer, he knows nothing about trucking. He knows nothing about a rate con and a load or anything else. And I had all of the documentation. There was nothing that he could send or give to this man to get me out of the truck or to get me to give my trailer away. Where's the dispatch at in all of this? Like you, you have you you have a recover you have a recovery driver out there that's claiming that you're not an employee of the company no more. This, that, and the third. Where's the dispatcher in all of this? So the dispatcher had completely stopped taking my calls. His manager had completely stopped taking my calls. The only person that was answering, responding, and calling me at this point is the 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 guy from recovery. And it wasn't the um the guy that showed up that's telling me, oh, I have to get out of the truck. Oh, he's he's taking this truck right now or any of that. It's the recovery guy. The guy that showed up is telling me, hey, I'm just doing my job. You know what I'm paid to do. I'm just doing what I'm told to do. It's nothing against you. He was pretty chill, but he did let me know he was coming to, you know, um, take the trailer. But the, yeah, they completely stopped answering my calls, like all together, stopped answering my calls. And I was making this man so much money because I was running so hard and I was able to do it and manage my clock. Like, it was just crazy. And that whole situation, it was, like, beyond nasty, and it just showed me who they were. So at this point of the juncture, this is, like, what, two months in that that happened? Two months in. So you— Two you months ga- in. So you gave the company, what, you, you gave the company seven more months. So what what made you—what what, what made you continue—what made you continue with the company after being treated so bad— with, with that experience This is what right made me there. continue. I, I spoke to somebody privately, a gentleman, I'm not going to say his name, but I spoke to somebody privately. He's higher up in the company. And um, he told me that he was going to be paying me since the guy came and took my trailer um, and that somebody would be reaching out to me for that payment, which he did, completely followed through on that. He told me if I had any more issues to follow up with him. And after that, I didn't for a while, um, for at least like maybe a month and a half. But um, uh, I also let him know that um, I was going to need a trailer like I needed to roll. They put me in a trailer that had... So they were uh, there were people higher up in the company that was trying to work with me. So I'm under the impression that, you know, even though all of that just happened, like this is a terrible experience. Okay, yeah, I need to go. Like, you know what? They're trying to make up for it. I, I truly felt like they were trying to make up for it. Like this bad, bitter taste like at the time I only had like um, ill feelings toward the guy who was reaching out to me telling me that, oh, he was going to take my truck and, oh, I'm now fired because I don't want to drive the load to where they're telling me to and I'm holding the load for hostage. There was only like an issue with that guy. And I remained professional throughout, except for when I was cursing him out because he was being disrespectful to me. But, and I let the guy who reached out to me from higher up know, like you can check every single call. You can check how I run. You can check all of the loads I've picked up. You can see the crazy amount of miles that I put in, you know, with the company. Like, I'm not trying to cause you any problems. Um, I don't see why you would be trying to, like, just take my truck and trailer. And then I explained the situation to him. Excuse me, sorry. He apologized. And um, I was under, I I was being alluded to, like, they were going to work with me. Then they sent me to pick up another uh, another trailer while that I dropped my trailer. After I got like the email and all the information for the payment and stating that I was going to get my trailer back, um, I gave that trailer to the other guy. They sent me to pick up another trailer. Inside of the trailer, the walls were too thick and it was wooden. So I attempted to pick up a load with that trailer. And um, yeah, no, I got rejected and I let them know that. After I got rejected, um, I was in Pennsylvania at the time. I was speaking to another driver still with the company. Um, and he let me know, like, you know what? No, you need to go and get your trailer. Find out where he's where he's heading, where his um, next delivery is, and go and get your trailer. Because a couple days had passed, um, and I was able to, like, just chill out, relax, get out of the truck home for a little bit, and then go back to the truck. And um, he just told me, like, you need to get your trailer back, like, right now. Like, he's seen... You know, he was trying to let me know, like, um, the how things are being set up. Like, it's not going to work for you. You're going to keep getting rejected. You're not making any money. And that's just going to force you out, you know, a bit more. Like, you're not going to keep tolerating it. And they're not going to work with you. 
So he said, get your trailer back and like get back to running. Just, you know, run hard and don't worry about anything else and try not to make any waves and you should be fine. So I had to set up the situation to get my trailer back. They would tell me he was going to be in one place. He, I went to that place from Pennsylvania to, to Ohio, empty with no load with this trailer um, to where this guy was supposedly delivering. He wasn't. And then I had to go from Ohio to Indiana. Um, and he was explaining how the location they gave me was where his next load was going to be, because I even thought that was sketchy. I became skeptical about everything. So for me to like stop, like, you know, going into a tangent because it is like a lot of information, I'm just going to say this. The one thing that kept me continuing to run with this company is having so much overhead and being in the negative, knowing that I have to pay taxes on all of this. So it doesn't matter how many loads you're running. If you, if you ran all of these loads and you accepted these rate cons for $6,000 and the rate con showed like, Hey, we're, we paid you $6,000. I'm going to, so I'm going to say it doesn't matter that you're paying fees on the truck, even though it does like all of those fees is like technically a write off for the truck, but it doesn't matter. You are now responsible for all of that money earned $6,000, $8,000. You didn't even see $1. All you have is your cash advance. You are still responsible for that six or $8,000. You are responsible. And I don't know if a lot of people think like that, or you just come over and you think it's going to work its way out. As far as them, you know, you return the truck back, oh, they allow you to leave with no hassle. Um, Yeah, that's kind of thing, but you're still financially responsible. Like, they're reporting the income that was made with that vehicle to the IRS regardless. Like, it, it doesn't make a, a difference how anybody tries to spin it or look at it. That information is reported, and you're going to pay for it. So I was trying to pay down my negative and then get out of the truck. And that just, it just kind of spiraled into me saying in July, you know what, I'm getting out of the truck, I'm leaving, and me letting them know that, and then never being routed home, never being routed to Illinois. Then I had like, you know, um, certain appointments that I really, really needed to make as far as like health, as far as um, just thing, I'm just going to say personal, personal life. And I would try to arrange my loads and everything so that I could do that. And they purposely would make sure I was not getting to where I was trying to go. Like it was just, it was too much. And then I'm being like 100% honest right now, this whole time I'm being honest with you, but like, this is just a bit more information that maybe other people don't share. I don't know if everybody has returned their trucks physically to the location. I did not, but I didn't abandon my truck either. It turned into like um, me shutting down the truck in a secured yard where, you know, I'm paying for parking and I wasn't allowing them to send anybody to randomly pick up the truck or randomly come hop in the truck. And they didn't um, send me some type of documentation stating that I'm not abandoning the truck because I shut down because I'm telling them, hey, I need a load coming to Illinois. I'm not looking to go to nowhere else. I'm not going down to Florida for you to say, hey, yeah, well, if you go down to Florida, the race is looking good. I can, uh, I can probably get you over to Illinois maybe in a couple of days for you to get me down to Florida and then send me back up to PA and then back down to Florida or down to Florida over to Louisiana, back to Florida. Like I'm just, I'm not doing that. And I will go all the way around and I'm not coming within 200 miles of Illinois at all. I'm not, I didn't even, I didn't touch Iowa. I barely touched Indiana. I mean, barely. I just like, it, it just became entirely too much. So once they sent over that information stating like, Hey, I'm not abandoning the truck. They were going to have somebody come and tow it because they wouldn't give me a load. I was like, Hey, okay, cool. You know, uh, when do you want the person to pick it up? And that was like, it was over a week of me going back and forth with them for that. But like all of that time, it's just entirely too much. And I, I don't necessarily look at it as time wasted because I really thought that, you know what, if I could survive super ego, I can definitely go out here into any of these companies and survive anything else. But like, I'm definitely going to put my professionalism over like arguing and going back and forth and just get out of Dodge when I see it going bad. There you go. There you go. Before we get on up out of here, man, that, I, I appreciate the story. Hell of an experience with you over there. You did mention that you was living off of your cash advances. So you did also say that the money did get bad after after the first couple of paychecks. Like, did it did it turn around? No, no, it, it didn't. Because you did say they they taught you in the sand, but now it just it just it just kept getting badder and badder. What was one what was one of your lowest paychecks? Twelve dollars. Wait, what? Twelve dollars. Say what? Twelve dollars. And actually I, I'm saying twelve dollars was like the lowest paycheck that I received 
no, but I've also no, been no, in. No, no, I like no, went no, into no. the negative. Wait, 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 well. wait, 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 wait. When you woke up Friday morning to check your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve dollars underneath one hundred. Not above twenty dollars, twelve dollars. So you woke up Friday morning to check your checking account to see twelve dollars ACH in your $12. account. dollars from how? dollars. So how much from how much of of the of the total? It has to be around fifty six to six thousand. Like I was rolling, I was. What? Yep. Out of five thousand dollars, you got twelve. Twelve dollars. So this is this is the thing, right? So it's not it's not about the drivers like not being smart enough to oh be like okay, you know what I need to leave, I need to get out of here. It's trying to manage getting out of there and keeping everything intact, keeping your CDL and not sacrificing that. You know, getting arrested or getting a whole bunch of different tickets or having a you know crazy things going on where you've abandoned the truck or they sent the police to come and remove you or anything like that, and then at the same time not having a crazy amount of money, you know, that you owe the company that you now have to, you owe, now you owe the company, you either need to work that off or that in addition is going to be, you know, tacked on to, I don't know if it would be tacked onto your taxes or if they would sue you or how exactly it would go. But it, it was just, it was a crazy experience. It was my first lease purchase experience. It was after doing a year in trucking with two other companies where I never had that problem, you know, as far as receiving pay running and hauling loads. I've had, yeah, you know, trucking, a different, you know, trucking experience where you have like maybe a load shift or a damaged trailer or something along the lines of that. But they send people out to repair those things. It was nothing like that at all. Like the company just kind of locks you in. And if you're somebody that you really, really want to own your truck and you go there with that mentality, you're kind of screwed before you even get started. Because you're going to keep trying to fight and work it out and get yourself out of the hole and then stay out of the hole. And then you're going to have the breakdown that you don't have the money to, like, you know, put into the truck physically. Like, you have no money to put into that truck. You you come over with savings or you have money set aside. You run through that money. You might have friends and family sending you money like I did. I had friends and family and then, you know my own personal accounts that I had savings in before I got there. And it just, it really turns into a nightmare and all of that. It's it just, it becomes consuming. And then you try to get out. The main thing is getting that truck back to the terminal. So you do not get any type of abandonment on your record, which they tried to do. Luckily I have the email saved um, that they sent over to me. Like, it's just, it's not as simple as people think. It's not. You can walk away if you can get that truck back to the terminal, but you're you're still going to pay money on like, you know, you're still going to pay taxes on all of the money that you've earned. It's, I, I promise you, it's just, it's not that simple. And there are people that say, you know what, screw this, I'm gone and they'll just leave the truck. It's harder for you to get hired on somewhere else. It is. You're going to end up at like Western Express, which I had already left. And then it's just, it's too much. It is. It's not where you want to be and it's not how you want to work things out, but it's entirely too much. There's a lot more I could tell you, but I've held you up and this has been like a long uh, type of situation, but don't go there. Don't, I'm, 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 I'm telling any driver listening to this, please do not go there. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how good you are at like your fine with your finances, how you know how to budget tightly. It does not matter. The company is not designed or structured for you to win or for you to be in the truck. And at some point, they are going to deliberately start to do things to get you to quit. After you quit, after they've made a certain amount of money off of you, you put in so much money and work and all of that into the truck, they're going to give the, that same truck to the next driver for the same amount of money, if not more, that they you know, initially sold it to you for. And the process starts all over again. It's more than hand over fist. You're stealing from the Raycon. You get these people that come over into the company. Either you're dumb enough to stay, you know, or you're smart enough to stay just long enough for you to really own the truck. Like, it's just, it's too much. And the people that I know that's like still in the company, um, they were there before I got there. And they're literally like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so tongue-tied. They're, they're to the point where they're either like maybe two, two years, year and a half or so, whatever, about to own their truck. There, there's a few people, they're about to own their equipment, but they're dealing with hell. That's for sure. They absolutely are. They don't want to pay those. Oh, this is something we didn't talk about. 
the maintenance bills, being stuck and shut down at the TAs and the loves because the, their maintenance bill is so crazy and they haven't paid. Like, it's a, it's a lot. The company is just all over the place. Even though they're getting the interior structure together and they're getting more vehicles, like, yeah, no, you're doomed. It's not set up for you to become the owner of that truck. It's not set up for you to have money every single week. And I know for a fact, because I've had conversations with people that'll call me, hey, how are you doing? How is it going? And they want to know, how am I, how am I doing so good? How am I surviving? Like when I was making the, you know, the $1,700, the $1,900, they wanted to know what was my thing? What was I doing? And it was making me money. And I'm thinking like, yeah, they want to know so that they can, you know, tell other people and maybe it'll help, you know, help the company out in a way. And it's not, it's just like to find out how, how exactly can we get you out of this truck? What exactly is it going to take for you to leave? Yeah, that's it. It's a wild ride. And a lot of guys that's going to watch this episode with us, of course, a few of them is going to come in and probably critique what you say what would what might you say to you know, the naysayers that that might find this unbelievable like, there, there is no na- there is no naysay at all the 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 fmcsa is currently um offering like something for drivers to come forward and um share their lease purchase experiences because they're trying to crack down on um the bs there isn't a driver the guy um cooking in the hammer lane i spoke to him too I seen what he was telling me and what he was talking about and oh, how you run to make money and all of that. And they quickly, like all of that diminishes when you try to choose a certain area to run out of because, you know, the, um, the, the load board or the spot market is showing freight up here. And um, it's showing that they have X amount of loads coming out and X amount of loads coming in. It's, it's bullshit at this company. Like it, it is absolutely BS. It, it, it absolutely is. If you're somebody that has some money to put down on a truck, you are a fool if you come to super ego. Um, if there's somebody that has made money, like you've came and you've put money down on a truck and you've walked away with your truck, I would love to know your experience. But I spoke to that guy. I spoke to him about taxes. I spoke to him about, um, I believe it's Trucker's Edge, um, where you see, you know, the loads coming in and out and all of that, about how to pick a lane and run the lane and all of that. And then um, also about, um, not being concerned with how much the company is making and how much the real rate con is, you know, but when things get as bad, so you're now accepting loads that's under a dollar per mile and you know for a fact that you're not making any money, what are we talking about? And why are you still convincing people to come over and you're showing people different tricks and all of that? The I even seen a video where he um, is claiming he has a, a few people that are like doing well and they're, they're successful and all of that and they're completing their lease. Well, lucky them. They must be doing whatever he did, but this man secured him a spot within the company. Like, I don't know. If you're a naysayer, hey, they, they can you can say whatever you want. You can post whatever you want. You can call in, you know, yourself and give your opinion. And um, I'll respond to it. I'll stay, you know, in tune a little bit. I'll try my best. But like there's there's nothing to naysay about at all. Most of the people that you see that's like has like a really good rapport with Super Ego or they're talking like in a good light of the company, they're gone. Within months, they're gone. They're gone. It's really only like two two or three people now. I know it's a white gentleman. He has like a bald head. He's always talking good about the company. And then the guy cooking in the hammer lane, that's about it. That's the, that's the only people who I've seen consistently. There's another guy. It's like Chef Hood Chef or something like Hood Chef Trucking or something like that. Super cool guy. He shows you, you know, how to cook in your truck. Um, he talks about things like that. And I watch how the post, like, you know, it'll go from day to day, week to week, a month here, month there, gone, just gone. I don't know if they're still at the company or not, but I would presume, you know, I presume that they're not. And that gentleman in particular, he made videos um, speaking about how uh, the company reached out to him and he had to let them know that he wasn't going to tell people, you know, to come or go or, you know, he wasn't going to sway people to uh, uh, think that Super Ego is like, you know, such a great company or anything like that. He just like posts videos because that's what he wants to do. But yeah, I, I would I would love to hear what, you know, other people have to say. So you feel that the people that are talking good, my guy Anonymous, he, he coined the term, he coined the term paid actors. You feel that uh, that the guys that are talking good about the company you you feel that they do this mostly for referral bonuses i feel like they've worked out some type of yep 
Well, well, um, the gentleman, those two gentlemen that's talking good about it, I'm not just saying referrals with them. I mean, the people that you meet at like gas stations or, you know, you meet them in like a trucker's lounge somewhere, you're getting maintenance done and you're just chatting and talking and talking or somebody like approaches you and they're talking to you about, you know, super ego and like those people that want you to come over into the company because they need the money. Like there's definitely a desperation there. There absolutely is. There's like, there's not like a lot of good that comes from the company. And um, me mentioning, uh, if you think about the time period where I'm telling you where I'm making the money, right? I started with them in January. So January, February, this is like February, March area where I'm making the money with the company. And if you also look at, you know, the the freight market and the spot market and what was going on and how it was getting worse and worse there, like it more than makes sense. You know, I'm trying to figure out why my loads, like you're giving me these loads and they're not paying enough. Then I put my foot down and I'm not moving because you're not giving me enough for the load or I'll just wait for the next load. And then I'm, I'm stuck. I'm literally shut down. The fuel car being shut off, that is everybody. That's not just one person in particular. That is everybody. When you're within a certain uh, mileage of your drop, you know, depending on how much you fueled when you were further away, they're cutting that fuel card off regardless. And they're not turning it on unless you have a load secured. And you might have a load and it still might not be on. You might have to call a few times. It's a, it, it's a lot. I've, see, I've also seen the load board. I was there long enough to see the load board, which is also BS. It's just you now selecting to run these loads and haul these loads for a certain amount of money versus them, you know, having a conversation and convincing you or letting you know what they have and how much is actually paying. And it's, it's the same. And you still have to call in and speak with the dispatcher pertaining to that. There's no money there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like that man been too, entirely too much. Yes. Shanae, Shanae, you, hey, listen, I, I beat people's names up, so I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm it's gonna, okay. I know that that, I know that this is like a lot to lay on you. Okay. But like you do these videos and like you guys, you think, you know, with the little information people call and tell you, but like, and some people, they, they are giving you, you know, their reaction and their responses, but there's so much more. There is so much more crazy nonsense, you know, like especially with the stalking thing, you know, I know of people, it's, it, it's just a lot. I'm going to stop here because I'll keep bringing up things and it'll just be like a, a further run on and I'm not trying to like take up all of your time, but like there's a lot more, a whole lot more. It doesn't matter how skilled you are and um, how, how much you know how to run. It doesn't matter if you are an owner operator for 15, 20, 30 years. I've seen a guy like that in there cussing them out when I went to go pick up my second truck. And he was so frustrated because he's, a, you know, he's a real trucker. And like for you to do him like that, he's not somebody that, you know, just got their CDL and, hey, popped up. Hey, I need a job or anything like that. But I've spoken with like a lot of people beforehand, during and after. And it's really it took me, you know, really getting into it, like with with the truckers that they seen where I was trying to go with it. And I had a good plan, but it was unrealistic simply because how that company is structured. And they broke a lot of things down for me. And, uh, you know, people may take this with a grain of rice or you could think like, oh, well, she's just bitter. OK, go and have at it. I've, I've told a few people not to go. And now I'm seeing the videos pop up all across YouTube. But OK. All right. Nice talking to you. I'm going to let you go. Um, I appreciate you calling in and uh, sharing your stories. Guys, guys, if you're interested in sharing your stories with us here on the Lockout Men channel, you can do that by the Gmail. That is Lockout Men Podcast Guest at gmail.com. I do appreciate it, and I hope everything works for you. Let's get together again well, in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. All right. Now, take it easy. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.